Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov gun guide. Today, I have three awesome builds for the HK416 ranging from budget to endgame. My intent with these builds is to shed some light on how comparable this gun has recently become to the M4. The three builds I have for you today range from budget to mid-game and finally to end-game. One of my goals today is to show you just how similar in stats the HK has become when compared to the M4 and that you don't need to spend a fortune making the gun function well, as the first build uses default barrel cutting down on some costs for example. The mid-game build and the end-game build are a bit pricier, but with the costs come but a bit more comes a little bit more control, with the end-game build sitting at 37 vertical recoil which is near meta. With this little intro out of the way, let's get into the budget build. Starting off, you'll want to purchase a stock HK416 from Peacekeeper. If you opt to go with the flea market because it's cheaper, make sure to get one that has a 14.5 inch barrel. After grabbing the stock rifle from Peacekeeper, you'll also want to buy the Hogue Overmolded Rubber FDE Pistol Grip, the Midwest 9 inch MLOC Handguard, the Magpul MLOC AFG FDE Foregrip, and the FDE Carbine Stock, and finally the Magpul Rubber Butt Pad. The reason I've opted for the FDE furniture is mainly for the aesthetic. If you don't like the colors, you can opt for the black furniture instead, but another benefit of the FDE stuff is that it's actually slightly cheaper than the black furniture for no stat loss. Anyway, continuing on our last parts, onto our last parts, they come from Mechanic, and these are the FDE Magpul front and rear sights, and the Surefire SF3P flash hider. The final part isn't currently available from traders, and that's the Sawcom RC2 suppressor. But the great thing about this suppressor is that it's fairly cheap on the flea market, sitting at about 33k at the time of me making this video. Overall, the gun comes out to 66 ergonomics and 62 vertical recoil for a price of about 147k plus 33k for the suppressor. However, from flea, the gun is sitting at about 143k with the suppressor included because the HK is generally a lot cheaper stock from Flea than Peacekeeper. I wouldn't rely on this price, which is why I mentioned the trader part value, but it definitely makes the gun a lot cheaper if you can get them for those Flea market values. Heading into the mid-game build, you're going to want to grab a stock version of the HK416 again. This time around, the barrel length doesn't matter as much because we're going to be replacing it with the 16.5 inch barrel this time around. Heading over to Peacekeeper, you'll need the MLOC 9 inch MLOC handguard, the MLOC AFG tactical grip, and the KC QD compensator, finally grabbing the Magpul rubber butt pad. Next, go to Skier and purchase the black carbine stock. Finishing off with Mechanic, you're going to grab the Magpul black and front rear sights along with the 16.5 inch barrel for the 416, and finally the Herrig Arms HG 15 pistol grip. The final part you need comes from Flea, and that is the KC NT4 Black Suppressor. Overall, the gun comes out to 58 ergonomics and 51 vertical recoil for a cost of about 188k plus 27 for the suppressor, the time of this video, putting the gun at a total cost of 213,000 rubles. This is definitely pricey, but from Flea, this gets knocked down to about 156k for everything including the suppressor, which actually only puts it marginally higher than the Flea value for the budget build, with quite a bit better stats in general. The final build for today is probably the most meta gun I've ever featured on my channel. Starting with the stock HK416, you'll want to grab the Growlithe Pistol Grip, the AEC Blackout Flash Hider, the 556 one, the AEC Sound Suppressor, the Volter Casby Keymod 6 inch guide, the Fortis Shift Grip, and the Magpul Rubber Butt Pad. Next, grab the MOE Carbine Stock from Skier and put the rubber butt pad you just bought onto it. The last parts you need are from Mechanic, and these are the Raptor Charging Handle, the normal one, not the grey one, the 20 inch HK416 barrel, the HK MRS 14 inch key mod handguard, and finally the Magpul Black front and rear sights. As a note as well, you're going to need Mechanic 4 for these parts, and if you don't have them, they're very expensive on flea. This brings the build out to 301k from trader prices, making it extremely expensive. However, you do end up with 37 vertical recoil and 56 ergonomics. If you use Flea, you can bring down the cost to about 270k, but just remember that the prices may fluctuate, so expect it to be at about 100 or 301k. Before I end the video, I just want to quickly mention the general cost of each of these builds. 
As I mentioned at the beginning, one of my goals is to show how comparable the guns are now between the M4 and the HK. The builds do seem really pricey and the budget 416 is quite expensive still, however, when factoring in the flea prices, the guns do become a lot easier to deal with and most of this is because the trader prices for these items is pretty high even if they're not very good parts. I think BSG does want the HK to be more expensive, so in turn they make a lot of the furniture more expensive, but as of right now, if you can use flea, most of the time you'll have similar costs and stats. Personally, I don't really pick the M4 or the HK over each other based on stats and cost, just because how similar they are, but more so depending on what I want to run look-wise. The HK is arguably still better because it has the tighter bullet spread and the higher RPM, but a lot of the time that won't really change the outcome of a fight. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and now I'm going to get into the final statements. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it or it helped you, please consider liking the video and subscribing as they really do help the channel out. You can also follow me on social media below as well as join my discord, I've got a link down there for you. If you want to go above and beyond, I also have a Patreon that you can support me through. Thank you again and I will see you in the next video.